Hey everybody, it's me, your old pal Dan Classic, and we're back at it again with another episode! Well, what dirty old crap is it this time? For your information, this week's review is brand new! Well, sort of. Ah, uh, not more new Mego. No, it's not Mego, it's Mattel! Well, what are you gonna do? Finally break down and review Barbie dolls? <laughs> ah, ha, ha, ha. It is just as I suspected! The fat capitalist pig dog is going to do a dolly review! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm not reviewing Barbie! I'm reviewing the manliest line of the 1980s, Masters of the Universe! Wait a minute, you said today's review was brand new! Well, it is! He-Man is back! Again? Well, with a brand new series of figures based on the original line! I thought you said you weren't going to review Masters of the Universe because everyone else and their mother had reviewed them! I don't remember that! You said it yourself, Gorilla! That you'd be just another fat bearded jackass reviewing Masters of the Universe stuff. Hey, that was taken out of context! Yes, I, I have to say I am disappointed. I was really hoping for some dolls. What? But you're the one that makes fun of the dolls! Yes, it is our thing, or, or at least I thought it was. You know, I, I don't even know you anymore. Now, wait a minute! Let him go, Gorilla. I think you've done enough. You know what? Never mind! This week, it's Masters of the Universe Origins by Mattel! Raz Holly, hit the music! Ah, the 1980s. This is where I grew up. That brief period of time where toy companies could freely bombard children with targeted advertising via cartoons, comics, and not to mention actual advertising. A bunch of phony baloney government types would eventually put the kibosh on this golden age, essentially killing off Saturday morning cartoons and ushering in a new era of media mediocrity that we may never recover from. Anyway, in 1982, Mattel was tired of getting their dicks kicked in by Kenner and the glut of Star Wars success they were enjoying. So they unleashed a media franchise that could put a dent in the toy market. A sword and sorcery tale with a sci-fi twist, Masters of the Universe figures were five and a half inches high and buff as fuck. They were made to look like they could kick the shit out of the three and three quarter Hasbro and Kenner figures that currently dominated the market. Mattel's decision to go big paid off big time as Masters of the Universe would go on to huge success. Mattel would continue to churn out new figures and use the animated show to sell them. But all good things come to an end and as toy shelves were choked with who gives a shit late editions, not to mention an entire subline for the ladies called She-Ra, Princess of Power. At this point, most consumers lost interest and moved on to other lines or aged out completely. But it wasn't long before Mattel would give He-Man another try. Multiple times in the last three decades, He-Man would return. First, they gave him a new look and story. Then when that didn't work out, they went for a gritty reimagining. And when Retro became cool, Mattel was there to whore out the He-Man license once again. And again, lending the license off to other companies like Super 7 and Funko to varied results. Mattel even got into the collector game a few years ago with the Classics line, again reimagining the line from a more modern adult collector perspective, selling the figures all over again for outrageous prices in limited numbers. The scalpers had a field day with these, and still do. Cut to 2020 and Mattel returns He-Man to his origin, 
the toy aisle with a line of mass-produced action figures that lean away from the collector concept and more to a time when you could actually afford to play with these pieces of shit. The figures are nearly dead ringers for their 1980s counterparts, but sport more modern style articulation. They look pretty cool, actually. Anyway, I got the first series of Masters of the Universe Classics line, so let's check them out! Okay, let's get started here with the, the most, most powerful, powerful man, man in the universe, He-Man. And as you can tell, the packaging here is a dead ringer for the OG Masters of the Universe packaging from the 1980s with the uh, broken red rocks and the and the blue top and the Masters of the Universe logo and the, the name. Um, the only thing that's different here is we have this little gimmick here that says modern posing retro play what the fuck does that supposed to mean um so i i guess what it's supposed to mean is that these figures are uh they have modern articulation um they they move you have uh, elbow and knee joints um they're they're not like the old figures and we'll take a look at an old figure here in a little bit um but let's take a look at he-man first um he looks very nice in the box you can see the entire figure um so you see behind him he has his accessories in the pack Package as well. Also, you can tell that he has his uh, comic book in there, and we'll get to that is that as well. Ages six and up, uh, the Mattel logo uh, proudly displayed. Um, and as we turn the box over, we have some really awesome-looking cover art on the top with the mystical power sword. The mighty He-Man protects Eternia from the forces of evil. Includes comic book. Oh, we'll get to that. Uh, modernizing and celebrating the original 80s Masters of the Universe action figures, Masters of the Universe Origins gives you the power to pose Eternia's greatest warriors as retro style figures or in new action packed battle positions. And then we have some uh, descriptions here. You can fit the power sword into the hand, twist into powerful battle positions, sort of uh, showing you the articulation of the figure. And then we have the collect them all right here with all six of the Series 1 figures. I got them all, but we're going to check them out. So let's go ahead and check out Skeletor. Uh, and here he is in his box as well. Same box cover art as everyone else. They all look exactly the same. They come with the exactly the same fucking comic book. For some reason, um, I'll get to that when we open it up. Turn it around the box. We have some really awesome looking box art and the caption that reads, The nefarious overlord Skeletor wants to control the power within Skull." And uh, some really sick fucking art of Skeletor raising his staff high. Um, and then it shows you can fit his Havoc staff into his hand and twist into powerful battle positions. Uh, collect them all. All your legal mumbo jumbo horseshit made in China. Big surprise. Moving on. Moving on to Man at Arms. Man at Arms. Uh, again, same, same box with everyone in line. Um, and you can see this is Man at Arms with a mustache. Check that out. Um, the original figure did not come with a mustache, but on the cartoon he had one, so uh, there was always this thing like, you know, why didn't the figure... Anyway, it was just some decision they made, and so he has got a, he had a mustache on the show, didn't have a mustache on the figure, and they've rectified that to modernize the figure, I guess, with his little uh, bicycle helmet and his green gear. He comes with some cool shit, and we'll see that when we open him up. The accessories are hidden behind the figure in a plastic bag, um, so, so not to obscure uh, the figure in the box. Very nice looking packaging on this. On the, around, around the back side here, uh, Weapons Master and Royal Advisor, Men at Arms assist He-Man in the battle against evil. And we have uh, Men at Arms shooting a beam out of his arm, and there's a dragon, and it says includes comic book. Oh yeah, we know. Fit Mace into hand, twist into Powerful battle positions. Uh, are you sensing a pattern here? Uh, every single goddamn time. Twist into powerful battle positions. I'm Marty Mattel. Uh, just kidding. 
Oh, let's take a look now at uh, Skeletor's Man at Arms, <laughs> which would be Beast Man. Um, Beast Man, super cool. He always kind of reminded me of an orange Sasquatch, sort of, or or like a, a orangutan man, maybe. Who knows? Um, he's fucking cool looking, looks great in the box. Turn it around, we got some awesome fucking art here. The ferocious beast man uses mind control to force animals to do Skeletor's evil bidding. Fucking cool, dude. Like, it, they made him such a geek on the show, but like, in the art and the descriptions of beast man, dude, like, he's fucking sick. <laughs> and you fit his whip into his hand, um, and it looks like the old whip, and you can twist into powerful battle positions. And uh, same, same shit on this box. So let's move on to the ladies. Uh, we have Tila, uh, and and she looks um, a, a lot like her her '80s counterpart. Um, of course, she has the modern articulation. And uh, not too bad looking. The knees, a little weird, but we'll we'll take a look at the figure once we get her out of the box. Of course, she has her accessories behind her. And as we turn around the back of the box, we have a, a picture of Tila, a uh, bitch slapping merman with her big snake staff. Um, it says, as captain of the Royal Guard, Tila fiercely fights to protect Eternia alongside He-Man. And uh, you can fit magical staff into hand and twist into powerful battle positions. Um, pretty standard uh, box art on the back, but not too bad. Um, you get a good idea of what we're, what we're getting into here. And uh, moving on. And here we have Evelyn. Um, she's <laughs> super cool. Uh, she's got the, the uh, canary yellow skin, um, the weird lady knees that they're using in this line. She's the evil warrior goddess. And uh, if we turn around to the back of the box, we have a really sick-ass picture of Evil Lynn raising her staff high. Evil Lynn wields the frightening magic. I'm sorry. Evil Lynn wields frightening magic, making her both Skeletor's greatest ally and his worst enemy. Uh, and you can fit Crystal Ball into hand and twist into powerful battle positions. Um, not a bad looking figure at all, and uh, we'll, we'll take a look at her and her accessories once we open these up. Finally, we had um, a couple of uh, uh, vehicle type things in this line. Um, this is one of them. I didn't get both. Um, there's one on the way. I didn't get everything quite yet, but uh, this is Battle Cat. Battle Cat um, is a uh, He-Man's fighting tiger um, and and best buddy, um, and on the if you remember the TV show, he he turns from uh, Cringer, the cowardly comedy relief figure, into uh, a, a raging fucking tiger that's got armor and he's dope and, and awesome. We have some really sick cover art here on the box, um, uh, showing He Man uh, atop Battle Cat, uh, terror terrifies every enemy. Removable armor and headpiece carries He-Man into battle, and unlike the old-school Battle Cat, this Battle Cat is fully posable. As we turn around to the back of the box, we have some really sick-ass art of uh, He-Man atop Battle Cat uh, attacking Skeletor. Strong, agile, ferocious, the faithful Battle Cat charges into battle with He-Man on his back and Skeletor in his sights. Um, so, and then we have the same blurb, the modernizing and celebrating and so on and so forth. We have the collect them all. And as you can see here, we also have Prince Adam on the sky sled, uh, which was the other piece that I don't have um, that is on the way. Well, maybe we'll take a look at that later on if we do another uh, another Masters of the Universe episode. And we show here that we can remove the, uh, the battle armor and uh, twist into powerful battle positions. So, let's take a look what this stuff looks like outside of the box. All right, let's talk packaging before uh, we move on here. Um, so here is uh, what we kind of end up with once we open up the bubbles. We still have every single one of these figures attached with little clear fucking rubber bands. Um, their, their fucking accessories are taped 
to their asses, so we didn't need the rubber band to hold down the accessories. Um, and the, the, uh, essentially, you can't get the figures out of the box without a pair of scissors um, to, to open them up. So, uh, of course, you know, you, you kind of, and, and it's clear. So, you, if you, a little kid might try to yank this out of there and break the fucking figure. And why should you? And it looks like the package was designed just fine and should have held He Man perfectly fine in the packaging without having to tie the fucking figure down and, uh, and and as far as the you know you can tape down the bag of accessories that's fine and dandy but you didn't need to fucking tie the figure down with these goddamn rubber bands just make the fucking packaging right the first goddamn time and you wouldn't have to do this shit even fucking battle cat is fucking tied into the box i need a goddamn pair of scissors to open these up on top of which, on top of which, in the in the package, we have not one, two, three, four, fucking read them and goddamn weep, six fucking comic books, and, and six of a kind. I've got all the same. Beast Barrage, Beast Barrage, Beast Barrage, Beast Barrage, Beast Barrage. And you know why? Because the first series of figures only comes with one goddamn comic book one four page fucking comic book wow wow fucking i understand i understand that mattel is a is a fucking a poor tiny independent fucking toy company that can't afford to fucking put together a couple of page comic book for each individual figure introducing them really Really, Mattel? This is what we get? We get one? We get one? And it, I mean, it looks okay. The art's pretty cool. It's not bad looking, but just one? And we introduce Beast Man, and that's it. Okay, so I finally got these figures all open and out of the box, um, but now that I have God damn, what a fucking cool looking He-Man figure. Um, almost a dead ringer for the old school figure, um, but more matte paint on this one. And of course, the uh, the modern posability. Uh, the accessories we have with him, we have his shield, his uh, his axe, and uh, and of course, the, uh, the, the sword. Um, and the sword, they, they kind of did almost a metallic thing on there. Not necessarily chrome, um, but as you can see, it's a, it seems like a shinier material um, uh, than the shield and the axe. Um, pretty fucking cool. And if we turn the, the sword around, we can see it links up with the other half of the sword, um, for which from the original story of, of He-Man or whatever, you, you put the two parts of the sword together. And shove it up your butt. <laughs> And it opens up Castle Grey Skull, um, so that's where the power is because they wanted power. They're the lords of power. Um, but uh, <laughs> moving on to the figure, though, the posability is really good. Um, one goddamn gripe I have with them, though, is that these elbows, um, when you first open them up out of the box, you really gotta work them to get them to start working, and you feel like you're gonna break the figure um, getting them to to actually bend. But once you do get them going. Uh, man, they look cool. We do have a couple of little fucking issues on here. I have some yellow fucking paint um, on He-Man for some reason. Have no idea how the fuck that happened. Um, and uh, the face, um, I think it looks okay. It doesn't look... It's not exactly like the old uh, figure, um, but still pretty cool. Not bad. Uh, you know what? I don't... I think when I when I saw pictures of this online, I didn't like it, but now that it's uh, sitting in front of me, this is actually a pretty fucking cool figure. Um, so that's He-Man. But before we uh, chuck him out of the out of frame here, let's bring in Battle Cat and see what He-Man looks like. Let's get the sword back on there, and uh, put you can put He-Man right there on Battle Cat, and he can he can ride into battle. Um, let's fucking pull out a little bit here. Um, look at that. Look at this. Wow. Fucking so cool. Battle Cat. Fucking, now we can do that. See you, human. All right, so now Battle Cat, fucking, um, with all the posability. The old one you could not pose. This one's got knees, hips, um, swivels, uh, the, the head, the mouth. Like, 
Rawr! Rawr! <laughs> so cool. Of course, you can take off the uh, the armor, and you've got the green tiger face underneath there. Um, but man, so fucking cool. This is one of the the neatest purchases uh, for me uh, so far this year. I, I gotta say, very very fucking impressed with this. Not bad. Um, after we get it out of all the goddamn superfluous shitty packaging. Um, this is actually a really sick figure. I am super glad I got this. All right, so here we have Man at Arms. Uh, once you get all of his accessories on him, he really looks cool. So he has two pieces here on the arm and a piece on the leg. Of course, he has his chest piece, but that's already attached um, when it comes. It, we, we see it's attached around the back here um, with the 2020 Mattel made in China, all that good shit. Um, but wow, what a cool looking figure. He also comes with his club. Um, he has a holdy hand and a smacking hand. Um, here's one gripe. So these fucking fingers, a couple of these figures, like their, their fingers were all like kind of off to the side um, and, and bent um, because they're made out of very soft plastic. Um, so uh, th there's one thing. I, I, I don't know how, what the fix would be on that, um, but I, I wish they, the, the, the hands didn't look all goddamn mangled um, as soon as I bought the, gra grabbed this thing out of the box. Um, but yeah, other than that, dude, the posability on these things is pretty great. This is an awesome looking figure. He looks like Tom Selleck in, in a fucking robotic armor, so he's fucking really great. <laughs> All right, and so here we have Beastman um, with all his accessories included. He has these arm gimmicks, of course, his chest piece and this uh, cool whip, whoosh, 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 um, which uh, it's kind of weird looking. I mean, the way they set it up, it, it's almost it looks like a, uh, a fucking spyglass, like like he's off looking off into the distance or a, a fucking beer bottle or uh, um, a fucking megaphone like hello, like, hello. do what do I tell you to do animals anyway a beast man's got this fucking whip um, and you can um, in the old figure you could swivel the, the the waist and it would spring back and he would swing the goddamn whip around and it was pretty cool um, on this one there's no such uh, thing on there um, and I understand they, they took away the action figure to, to you can get crazy cool poses on them and uh, really nice looking poses on all these figures. I keep saying that, but man, it's so true. So many awesome little points of articulation on them. Um, they really uh, went all out on these. Mattel did a good job. Um, it, it, once I got them out of the, the fucking ridiculous packaging, these figures are fucking pretty sweet. All right, and so next up here we have Tila. Um, in her awesome gear with her tiny little shield and uh, her dope uh, snake staff. This is a really sick looking figure. Obviously, I think back in the day, they, they must have based this character on a Red Sonia, maybe? I don't know. I know the original uh, Tila was supposed to be fucking green or some shit. These fucking figures, though, are really fucking sick. Um, I love the little cobra headdress that she has. Um, you can remove it. I don't know why you would, but looks great though. Looks, dude, looks the just like she does on the animated uh, show. Um, and then we got this the snake staff uh, made out of a harder plastic, actually, not a soft plastic like back in the day um, that that would become all wavy and weird. Even though it is supposed to be a snake staff, so it can be. But uh, yeah, very fucking cool. Her tiny shield. Great detail on there. The paint job on this figure is awesome. The posability is cool. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of the fucking knee articulation, but I don't know if there's a better way to, to do this. Um, and uh, and so there you go. But still, uh, Tila, great figure. All right, and here we are with Evil Lynn. Um, wow, very fucking cool looking figure, very good likeness to who it's supposed to be, um, you know, Evil Lynn <laughs> from the series <laughs> with her, uh, with her yellow skin. I know there's another, there's an alternate Evil Lynn that has, uh, regular colored skin. Um, I'm always a big fan of the yellow one. Um, very cool with the blue and yellow, the, the colors just pop. It's a very sick looking figure. She's got her crystal ball. Um, it seems short. Does this seem shorter? 
Is it, let me know in the comments down there. Stankus, let me know. Was this shorter in the fucking 80s, this step, or, or was it longer in this? I remember this being longer. I had this when I was a kid, the original figure, and I feel like the staff was fucking longer. Um, I, I feel like Mattel's fucking cheaping out. Also, they made it a little fucking wide. I really had to, like, stretch her hand out to get it in there. That's what she said. <laughs> Michael. <laughs> Michael. <laughs> Michael, please. There he is. Please. There he is. Come on. Um, so I don't know. And again, as, as one gripe on these figures, um, the joints, they're, they start out really, really tight, um, but that should be a good thing, but it generally isn't because that means that eventually these things, if I can get them loose, that means they're only going to get looser. And the looser they get, uh, you know, eventually they're just going to start popping out of the uh, off the ball joints, and uh, then they're going to be pretty much fucking useless. Um, if you, you know, the more you pose them around, and again, these weren't made to be collectibles; these were made as toys. These are sold on the toy aisle, ages six and up. Even though a bunch of booger eaters are going after them right now on the secondary market. Um, these are still toys and, uh, pretty cool toys, but, uh, you know, I do have my doubts. All right. And finally, here he is Skeletor. <laughs> what a cool looking figure. Now I've said it before, but if you were only going to get one or two of these, obviously this is one of the figures you are going to get. Uh, Skeletor, of course, has all the points of articulation just like everyone else and looks a lot like his uh, his old counterpart. Um, man, but wow, what a cool looking fucking figure we've got here. He comes with his staff. He also comes with his sword um, the uh, in, in purple um, right here as we have here. And if you see, um, you can take uh, He-Man's uh, sword and we can, we can put them together and together combine their powers combined, they can open up Castle Grayskull, or, or you can uh, the rule Eternia, or or something. Um, but pretty darn cool, um, you know the accessories that that go together. The old ones kind of did that too. Um, and and just so you know, I do have an old fucking Skeletor here. So let's take a look and see what his 1980s counterpart uh, looks like. Here is a 1980s. Skeletor, um, and as you can see, little differences. The colors of the costume are are a little different, um, and then the head sculpt. Um, the new one, they decided to go with the laughing skeleton. <laughs> hey man, um, sort of a laughing Skeletor. Um, this one just has the uh, the yellow and green skull. Um, very, very fucking cool. Um, both of these, very cool, actually. I, I like the old one. I like the head sculpt on the old one a little bit better, I gotta say. Um, but if you, as you can see, the hands, one, one smacking hand and one holdy hand. Um, and one thing I always thought was kind of funny, you can give them, give them the old, uh, the old thumbs up. Hey! So all in all, these are great figures, um, I gotta say. Um, they do have a couple of faults. We do have some weird uh, you know, paint smudges, and because it's dry paint, you do end up with that. Uh, you do have a couple of uh, problems with the articulation being a little stiff at first, and it, you know, it, it kind of seems like a little foreboding that we're gonna have some issues in the future. If you pose them too much, you might end up uh, losing limbs here, um, and you won't be able to get them back on, or they won't be tight. You'll have really loosey-goosey limbs. Um, but other than that, other than that, these are really great figures, and um, and I would recommend them to anybody that's a collector, and you can still fucking find these things at least the first series haven't been snapped up by the booger eating fucking uh, uh resellers and scalpers so all in all uh the 2020 masters of the universe by mattel fucking awesome figures well that's masters of the universe origins what do you think of these figures let us know in the comments down below and tell us how you think dang classic's gonna sell out next time i bet in the next episode he'll be telling us all about express vpn how about you shut the fuck up anyway that's all for this week Raz holly hit the music
Thank you.